In this video, I am going to outline the key elements to every argument and the methods used to create a valid point in a debate. This is part two of the value of debating. Sustaining a convincing argument is the central performance of intellectual life. Those types of assessments that do not need arguments are the least demanding and least rewarding. I have recently been doing some research for my dissertation on the pragmatic and Socratic approach to education. A dissertation is all about how the student proposes a mechanism to solve a problem which involves the use of reasoning methods and logical explanations to justify it. The life and blood of education is the freedom to pursue an argument. It enables the student to discipline themselves to have the taste of knowledge to want to know more. Yet it is important to note how a good argument is about advancing knowledge rather than winning. So, let's begin. The definition of an argument is a reason or set of reasons given with an aim of persuading others that an action or idea is right or wrong. The definition of reason is a cause, explanation or justification for an action or event. The definition of logic is reasoning conducted or assessed according to strict principles of validity. Tolman explains how every argument structure must consist of three main components a claim, evidence and an explanation. The claim basically answers what are you trying to get me to think or believe in and it is the statement which proposes a solution to a problem. The evidence answers what have you got to prove it works through qualitative and quantitative evidence like reports and statistics. The explanation answers how does this lead to the claim. It connects the evidence and the claim together. It provides an answer to how they are related. For example, someone could argue that if they had a bigger car park they would have more customers into their restaurants. They are making a link between more people having access to parking facilities and people coming into their restaurant. There are a whole range of methods to use these components. They all fall under eight main forms of reasoning. Deductive reasoning. This type of reasoning derives from its premises. This kind of argument has to answer are the premises sound and do the premises lead to the conclusion? An example, an example of deductive reasoning would be all men are mortal, Socrates is a man, and therefore Socrates is a mortal. Inductive reasoning. This form of reasoning involves a reference from a prior experience or observation that is used to support the conclusion. This kind of argument needs to answer are the examples described accurately? Was the number of examples enough? Are there counterexamples to prove otherwise, and are the examples or the counterexamples more representative? Abductive reasoning. This kind of reasoning stems from collecting facts and making links to the foundations. For example, a doctor would record the symptoms from their patient and link them to an illness that gives off these kinds of symptoms. This kind of reasoning has to answer: Are the facts described accurately? Are there any other facts being ignored that would contradict the hypothesis and are there any other hypotheses accessible to explain the same set of facts. Cause and effect. This kind of reasoning explains how a phenomenon is caused by another, making links between the stages in the process to explain how it impacted on the subject or specimen. This kind of reasoning has to answer is the cause necessary for the effect. Is the cause enough for the effect? Did the cause come before the effect? Is there any logical explanation as to how the cause stimulated the effect? And are there other causes that can explain the effect? Argument from sign. This method of reasoning claims that one phenomenon is linked with another. For example, someone could link the car park being full next to the restaurant and assuming that is why it's successful. The link is between the people parking their cars and assuming they are the ones going to the restaurant. This kind of reasoning has to answer how strong is the link between the two items. Are there unexamined materials that can explain the relationship more effectively? And are the individuals making the ar argument trying to base a casual claim on sign reasoning? Argument from division. 
This kind of reasoning involves the process of elimination to arrive at an examined conclusion. The questions to answer if using this argument would be how have we identified all of the alternatives? Are the alternatives mutually exclusive? And are there good reasons for rejecting the other alternatives? Argument from analogy. An analogy is a comparison made to draw out similarities between two items. The two questions an analogy has to answer are which two items are being compared and whether the comparison is valid. An analogy is not valid if the two items are not sufficiently similar, if the comparison is misleading or if the, this item compared is described inaccurately. Argument from narrative. This kind of argument creates a relationship between the current dilemma and one that has happened. Be it fact or fiction, the relationship is what was learnt. For example, in the story of the boy who cried wolf, we learn how the impact of lying can impact upon a person's trust between someone. This kind of argument can be very effective if used correctly, yet it can take a fair bit of time to tell the story and the listener may miss a collection of points through detailed narration by the speaker. I hope you have found this video to be interesting and helpful. If you feel I have made any mistakes, please say and share your thoughts on where I can improve for next time. Thank you very much for watching and wish you all the best.